If you're using the use state hook to filter data similar to this inside of React, you're actually doing it wrong. And that's because this gives your users a horrible experience. For example, let's say I'm typing in some filtering information and I accidentally click on the home link. Well, I'll just click back and go back, but you'll notice all that filtering I had is completely gone. And depending on how complex your filtering is, this could be a huge detriment to your users. Also, if I wanted to share a page that has a filtered list with someone, I have no way to do that. So instead, all of this data should be stored in the URL. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why that is and how to really easily implement it. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I already kind of showed you the problem with this, but I'm sure you've ran into sites before where when you're trying to filter something, it's not actually stored. So when you refresh or do something else, you lose all that data and it is incredibly frustrating. So the easiest way for you to fix this is going to be taking everything out of state and instead putting it into the URL. Now you could handle this manually by doing like window.history and pushing in information to the state and stuff like that. But 99% of the time, if you're working in React, you're using a router of some form, whether it's the Next.js router, the React router, or some other router. In our case, we're going to be using React router. I'm gonna show you just the dead simplest way to implement this. So the very first thing we need to do is obviously remove our state. Since we no longer want to store this in state, we wanna store it in the URL. And the best way to get information from the URL and save it in the URL is with the use search params hook. So we can use this use search params hook and it takes in a default value. So in our case, we want our queue property to be an empty string and our only computer items to be the Boolean false, just like that. So now we have our information and this gives us two props, just like a normal use state hook. This is going to give us our search params and it's going to give us our set search params as well. So we can just set that like this. So now we have our search params and this is just a URL search params object. So I can use like the dot get method. I can say I want to get the queue object from here. So in our case, I'm getting that empty string. So I can say const queue is equal to that. I can do the same exact thing here. I can get that only computer items property from here. And I can set my only computer items variable. Now, one minor downside to doing this is that everything in search params is stored as a string because obviously anything I put in my URL is going to be a string. So I need to convert these from strings to the type that I care about. So this is going to be a string that is either true or false. So in our case, I just want to check to see if it is equal to the string true. If so, I'm going to use it as true. Otherwise, it's going to be set to false. So that's all that I need to do for this. Inside of here, I just have some code that's just filtering the items. This code doesn't really matter. It's just the filtering code. So that doesn't matter. All that matters is how we store this information. So here on our on change, we need to modify this. So instead of storing it in state, we store it in these URL params. So we can call set search params. And what we want to do is we want to get the previous search params that we have. And all I want to do is I want to add on to that. So I can say my previous items, I want to set the queue property here. I want to set it to my e.target.value. And then I'm going to return the previous params just like that. So essentially, I'm just adding a new parameter onto here. I can copy this down and do the exact same thing down here. This is going to be the checked property. And this is going to be for that only computer items. There we go. Now, if I give that a quick save and I just start typing into here, for example, KE, you notice that this is working fine. My filtering is still working, but the big difference is all the way up here inside the URL, you'll notice that it actually has Q equals KE and my only computer items is set to false. When I check my checkbox, you can now see that this has changed to true. Now, this is really great because if I click on the home button and I click back, you can see it brings me back here with all of my filtering information in place. There's one downside to this approach that I need to make one modification for. And that's if I keep clicking back, you're noticing it's going back one single parameter at a time. Most likely when you're filtering, you don't want your back button to work like that. Instead, you want it to just jump straight to the page you're on before. So to fix that problem, we can come in here on our set search params. It actually takes two properties. And the second one is some options. And we can say that we want to replace the current URL by saying replace true. And all that this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, when I update my URL, don't actually make it so when I click back, it goes to the previous URL. Just make it replace the current page 100%. So if I do that, I'm just going to give my page a big refresh. We'll go to the home here. We'll go to the store. We'll just make some changes into here. And then when we click back, you notice it brings me straight to the home page instead of just bringing me back one parameter at a time. And now if I go forward, you can see I'm back here again, click on home, click back, I'm back to my store here. I can copy this URL, paste it. And now you can see I have all that filtering in there. So all my data is in the URL, which is my one source of truth. And all of my application just works off of that. So it's better for your user and it's kind of better for you because everything's in one single place. 
Now, obviously you can do this inside of other routers as well. So you could do it inside of Next. You can do it without a router. This is just the simplest way to do it in React Router. There's even more complex ways to do it in React Router if you want, if you're doing things like forms and actions and loaders. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're storing really complex data, like maybe you have an array from like a select that has a multi-select capability, making sure you manage and convert all of that from a string to the proper values is a little bit difficult. So I'd recommend using something like Zod or some other schema validation library to do all of those conversions for you. And luckily for you, I have a full tutorial on Zod, which is popping up on the screen right now. And I also have a full React router tutorial that's also on the screen if you're interested in learning more about that. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.